think of Sri Ramakrishna and pray for peace and harmony. The Shanti Aryom Datsat Om Stapaka Yajadharmasya Sarvadharmaswarupine Stapaka Yajadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Rityor ma mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Spiritual practice, it is very important for the seekers of God. Sri Ramakrishna has given most valuable teachings just to follow them we are sure to reach the goal the supreme abode of our true self so the success in spiritual life depends on the purity of the mind. So, it comes to the point we should have sufficient control over the mind. We should struggle to maintain the purity of the mind. Then we should develop love towards God and become more and more selfless, more and more divine. We should get rid of all obstructions on our way to the goal. The more we involve in the world, the more obstructions we are ourselves creating. We ourselves are responsible for putting blocks on our way. So, you have to completely dissociate yourself from the involvement of the worldly things. That is, you will have to practice the discipline of renunciation. Though it is very difficult, it must be practiced to get God. So, there are so many stages in our life. We have to pass through a lot of struggles. In the last two classes I have already dealt with the topic struggles how we should uh, face the battlefield 
and we are all like soldiers. Battle readiness must be there. He must know the technique of fighting. Then it is possible to go forward in spiritual path. So we have dealt with one aspect of struggles. Now, how do we prevent ourselves from catching mental contagion? From outside. That is, how to prevent outside transmission of impurities by coming in contact with various types of people there is every possibility that impurities may be transferred they have got the power to pierce into our heart and cause effect so how many ways we have to struggle. In molding the mind, it is important to see that we do not make our task more difficult by courting difficulties from outside, for within us there will already be quite enough. Where do you want to add more difficulties? More difficulties means more fight. So herein comes the great help of the mystics, those who have lived the life, those who have struggled to the end, reached the goal, got illumined and came forward to teach us how we also could reach that goal. That's why I always keep on telling the devotees, every day please read some life stories of saints. It's very important. Very important. The saint's life, how every saint had to struggle very hard to reach the truth. So, they have given us a few simple instructions about avoiding the absorption of poison from outside. Poison. The first simple instruction, all the mystics of the world have told that we should give importance to holy company. It has got tremendous value. That means you have to be cautious about the people whom you are associating with. If you are aspiring spiritually, undoubtedly you should be watchful and careful about the people whom you are associating with. Negatively speaking, you should avoid evil company. That means people who distract you, who take you away from the goal. You 
you must be watchful over them you must never entertain such association don't give reason i am in this society i have got social obligation i have to go i have to go i have to do like that if you talk like that then you will be where as you were before you have not you will not be able to move any step further because company is very important how far your mind is able to dwell on the divine spiritual ideas is important how far you are able to maintain that purity level is important so that's the first simple instruction to follow keep holy company avoid evil company secondly you see they have pinpointed how nicely they have prepared as it were the instructions for us look why are you unnecessarily passing through all sorts of tribulations follow these principles you will be wonderful but we don't follow that's a difficulty what can be done anyway let us know the truth let us know our weakness let us fight them with greater determination that's all i can say so the second instruction is never accuse anyone of anything what a fine teaching never accuse anyone of anything if the teacher corrects the disciple he should not uh say oh why the guru is finding fault in me he should not say that it is not with the idea of finding fault in you guru is trying to point out it is not to take you forward in the spiritual journey he is picking out he is clearing off the impurities of the disciples mind so that is why it is very clearly stated you must have tremendous love and devotion to guru there is a basic foundation in spiritual life if you don't have reverence to the guru we cannot enter into spiritual realm at all beware of judging others every saint has said that shri ramakrishna has said that holy mother shri sharda devi has said that lord jesus has said that all the mystics all incarnations have said still we commit that blunder always trying to judge others never judge others don't humiliate anyone that's our ideal if you have this ideal immediately you you can correct yourself yes i did the wrong thing i should not hurt anybody i should not humiliate anyone i am not an ordinary being in the sense of the world i am a spiritual seeker i belong to a different class like that you should think in yourself don't degrade yourself on the other hand keep yourself always that distinct identity
in these simple looking instructions some sound psychology is involved both good and evil are contagions and the mind is susceptible to both in the company of the holy what happens even a depraved soul may surprisingly be reformed it is true in evil company what will happen a good man may unexpectedly become depraved both results are there one becomes transformed for good or ill by good or evil company so evil company is to be avoided because in such company what will happen what will happen our sinful tendencies are strengthened and thus our inner struggles are rendered more formidable that's why you should avoid evil company and for just the contrary reason holy company has to be sought when we have the habit of criticizing the people we open a way for unwholesome contagion to flow into our character from outside we can understand how this happens when we consider what we do when we criticize anyone we criticize people for their alleged failures mistakes and sinful acts such failures arise from human weakness when we cultivate the habit of criticizing we consciously harming ourselves when we cultivate the habit of criticizing we allow others weaknesses to come and settle in our mind unconsciously we do that the entrance of such weakness is not even perceived you don't know what great harm is being done but it is done the damage is done the every moment you criticize every moment you are damaging yourself so they acquire a hold like microscopic bugs so to say only after a long time is it discovered that we have caught the contagion and to our surprise we find ourselves manifesting the same weakness follies and sins of which we have self righteously accused others the law behind this is whatever we meditate on we imbibe by meditating on god you become god 
by meditating on devil you become devilish so a struggling spiritual aspirant must not judge others still less humiliate them such is the advice of mystics to fighters of inner warfare judging others is nothing but finding faults with others finding faults with others is psychologically suicidal lord buddha says the fault of others is easily perceived but that of one's self is difficult to perceive a man winnows his neighbor's faults like a chaff but his own faults he hides as a cheat hides the false die from the gambler if a man looks to the faults of others and is always inclined to take offense his own passions will grow and he is far from the destruction of passions not about the perversities of others not about their sins of commission or omission but about his own misdeeds and negligence alone should a sage be worried these are said by lord buddha when we humiliate others deliberately we thus cause them pain we are doing something worse than judging others this puts off our guard and lays us completely open to the play of evil forces lord buddha says if a man by causing pain to others wishes to obtain pleasure for himself he entangled in bonds of selfishness will never be freed from hatred instead of finding fault with any or humiliating any one who is engaged in inner warfare should practice the following teaching of the buddha lord buddha says let a man overcome anger by love let him overcome evil by good let him overcome the greedy by liberality the liar by truth so far we have only discussed how to make ourselves battle ready for inner struggles in last two classes i have dealt with this subject elaborately the more important question is what we have to do in the actual but invisible warfare these inner struggles come to us mainly in the form of temptations various types of temptations come and attack us there is much to be known in regard to how to fight in a way conducive to attaining victory when we are assailed by temptations the time for warfare is a time for doing 
not for speculating and philosophizing. Action at the time of inner struggle will necessarily be different from action preparatory to battle. Now is the actual fight. There are rules of inner warfare and they need to be known. They can be known only from careful study of the lives and teachings of the mystics. After going through these battles and attaining victory, these mystics have told us how they won them. Who is free from temptations? Temptations will come in everybody's life, no matter who or what he is. There is no way of escaping them. In fact, temptations play a beneficial role in our spiritual life. Some mystics are of the view that those who believe in and love God should prepare their souls for being assailed by temptations so that when temptations actually come they may not be confused or worsted in the battle. They must be willing to suffer the burden of affliction in willing submission to the Lord's examination. In Imitation of Christ, a famous book, Thomas Kempis, says, The fire proveth gold, and temptation proveth the righteous man. In Philokalia, another famous text, it is said, an aspirant who has not endured temptations has not been tried. He does not know what his strength is. How do we prepare our souls for enduring temptations? The most important and basic thing, as we have said, is to renounce the will to enjoy the phenomenal. That's the point. Renounce the will to enjoy the phenomenal. If we have the will to enjoy, temptation is at once in collusion with our weakness. Then we topple over in no time. But if we don't have the will to enjoy, we may be surrounded by temptations for years on end, yet we shall not succumb. When the renunciation of the will to enjoy is joined with readiness to endure to the last, that is, the perfect preparation for encounter with temptation. Sri Ramakrishna says, forbear, forbear, forbear. One who endures, triumphs. One who does not, goes under. Sri Ramakrishna again tells, look at the anvil of a blacksmith. How it is hammered and beaten, yet doesn't move from its place. Let man learn patience and endurance from it. We may learn a great deal about how to endure temptations from the teachings of the mystics. We shall study a few of their precepts which will serve the purpose on hand. One is don't Try to fly from temptations, but set the heart right. For many, while trying to fly from them, 
have fallen more grievously into the into them like falling from the frying pan into the fire it is obvious that not trying to fly from temptations does not mean that one should want them the meaning is that one should not be panicky one should not be nervous about them nor one should deliberately make it easy for temptations to assail one all spiritual aspirants must live cautious and conservative lives which means conserving mental and physical energy when temptations assail you the mystic says don't try to understand why and wherefore they come but only pray that you may not be overcome by them in other words don't try to psychoanalyze yourself but bring your case quickly before the god in your heart don't seek to know the causes of temptations for in any case as far as the aspirant is concerned it is an unnecessary wastage of mental energy such an attempted search may involve the aspirant in greater difficulty when temptations assail the mind keep the body pure even when temptations assault your body don't give your inner consent never submit to despondency discard all cowardice and discouragement little by little by practice and long suffering through god's help temptations will be overcome but not by any violence upon oneself or disquiet of mind further the mystic says make no haste in times of trouble there is great wisdom in this teaching in times of trouble we are generally confused confusion means mental darkness if a person moves hurriedly in darkness what will happen he can only expect greater danger than merely being in darkness the man who stands still in darkness and waits for light is wiser than the man who impatiently runs to get out of darkness and quickly gets into greater trouble therefore in times of trouble we must not be in a hurry this is precious advice in conducting our inner light so let us bear all these points in our mind and format our life accordingly page 554 chapter 28 A new scene she was and other devotees are engaged in conversation in front in front of Advaita's house Mukunda sings sleep no more how long will you lie in maya's slumber locked o mind who are you why have you been born for godan is your own true self o mind unclose your eyes at last and wake yourself from evil dreams a fool you are to bind yourself so to the passing shows of life when in you lives eternal bliss come out of the gloom o foolish mind come out and hail the rising sun shri ramakrishna praised the voice of the singer highly another scene nimai is staying at home Shiva comes to visit him first he meets Shachi the mother weeps and says my son does not attend to his household duties my eldest son Vishwarupa has renounced the world and my heart has ached ever since 
Now I fear that Nimai will follow in his steps. Nimai arrives. Sachi says to Shiva's, Look at him. Tears run down his cheeks and breast. Tell, tell me how I can free him from these notions. At the sight of Shiva's, Nimai clings to his feet and says, with eyes full of tears, O oh me, revered sir, I have not yet attained devotion to Krishna. Futile is this wretched life. Tell me, sir, where is Krishna? Where shall I find Krishna? Give me the dust of your feet with your blessing, that I may realize the blue one with a garland of wild flowers hanging about his neck. Sri Ramakrishna looked at him. He was eager to say something, but he couldn't. His voice was choked with emotion. The tears ran down his cheeks with unmoving eyes. He watched Nimai clinging to Shiva's feet and saying, Sir, I have not attained devotion to Krishna. Nimai has opened a school, but he can't teach the students any longer. Gangadas, his former teacher, comes to persuade him to direct his attention to his worldly duties. He says to Shivas, Listen, Shivas, we are Brahmins too and devoted to the worship of Vishnu, but you people are ruining Nimai's worldly prospects. Masters to him. That's the advice of the worldly wise. Do this as well as that. When the worldly man teaches spirituality, he always advises a compromise between the world and God. Yem said, Yes, sir, that is true. Ganga Das continues his argument with Nimai. He says, Nimai, undoubtedly you are versed in the scriptures. Reason with me. Explain to me if any other duty is superior to worldly duties, you are a householder. Why disregard the duties of a householder and follow others' duties? Master said to him, Did you notice? He is trying to persuade Nimai to make a compromise. Yem said, Yes, sir. Nimai says to Gangadas, I am not willfully indifferent to a householder's duties. On the contrary, it is my desire to hold to all sides. But revered sir, I don't know what it is that draws me on. I don't know what to do. I want to cling to the shore, but I can't. My soul wanders away. I am helpless. My soul constantly wants to plunge headlong into the boundless ocean. We shall stop here. So, keep on struggling. That's why we say, do meditation, do prayer, do devotion. Have you done today? Oh, Swamiji, I could do only morning, I could not do night. They say like that. Morning, how long did you do? I could do only five minutes, I could not spare more time. They want spiritual life. They Really, they want. But they are placed themselves in a helpless position. They are helpless. They say, what can we do? We have to run. Run to the job. It is a fact. That means, you yourself have placed, placed yourself in such a situation, you can't help but running. So, the more you are involved in worldly activities in such manner, the more struggle you will have to make in order to enter into the spiritual field. Without struggling, you can't have anything spiritual. That's the essence what I want to tell you. That's the essence. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quenched that mighty forest fire, worldly list, raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart. 
opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drown deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bought for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy. How huge then is my assuredness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself, give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is the prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as just beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul as I know. O thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be died all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.